Fantastic Beasts of Shadowlands and where to find them. In this video we're going to be looking at different hunter tames, hunter pets that you can find all over Shadowlands. The ones that look unique, the ones that look cool. I will tell you about all of those that I personally have tamed. We're not going to be looking at Petopia, we're not going to be looking at Wowhead. It is going to be my personal findings and what me as a solo casual player who was leveling a Beastmaster Hunter all the way to level 16 Shadowlands, what do I think about those pets? Should you be bothering to find them? Well, a lot of it is up to you, but a lot of it is going to be hopefully driven by some advice that I can give you and some of my first-hand impressions. I wonder though if JK Rowling is gonna sue me or something for borrowing the name. Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel, my name is Gyro, we are talking about hunter beasts, hunter tameable pets that you can find in Shadowlands today. So we're going to just go through the list, hopefully you saw the table of contents and uh, you know how to use table of contents on YouTube, please click in the timestamps in the description of this video or just drag the cursor of the timeline of this video to go to a particular pet that you are more interested in and I'll say a few words about each one of these. So let's get started immediately. So first of all in the first zone of Bastion you're going to experience and the, the whole unique fauna of Bastion, flora and fauna I should say, and the environments are really wonderful and obviously any expansion brings new versions of the old very familiar pets, the ones that we have seen for many expansions before this date. But um, I cannot simply talk to you about every single one, which is why I'm going to single out only a few families or few types of pets, the ones that have changed the most, at least in my eyes, and the ones that I am personally, well, somewhat excited about, and the ones that I think, therefore, are worth your while taming and taking a look at them personally, whether they fit your style as a Beastmaster Hunter. So first one is Larians. Larians are feather mains. They are of tenacity family as far as I know, but unfortunately on this particular hunter, funnily enough, I do not have, um, I have not learned the skill to tame feather mains. I, they are a little bit too fluffy for me. I personally will not be taming Larians. Number two here is Phalanxes. Phalanxes are mechanical cats. They are mechanical and they are of cunning nature. So they are defensive build of a cunning pet, however, so cunning pets, in case you're not familiar with those, they have a passive effect, they give you, they speed up, speed you up, so you are moving faster, basically, that's their passive effect, general on you as a player. But uh, cunning pets, they have slightly different abilities, special abilities, some of them are reducing healing or re reducing movement speed of the enemies, this one is more of a defensive build, so it's tanky. In other words, it's tanky. It has defense metrics that can protect it temporarily, reduce the amount of damage incoming. Well, what can I say? They look all right, they look quite cool, and I think that they will definitely work with some transmogs, and especially they work well <clears throat> for potentially um, mechanomes like myself in this particular case. Would I be taming one? No, I would not, simply because Cunning Family does not give me what I'm after, and I'm after Life Leech, I'm after Self Sustain. In this case, re increased speed of movement is not very important to me, it might be to you, however. Ether worms are wind serpents, they are of ferocity family, which is closer to home for me. These are the ones that are allowing you to leech life, as well as they are tanky. So they also have an ability that increases dodge. So they are tanky, they are leeching life, and they also look amazing, in my opinion. Normally, I am not a fan of those upright wind serpents. I am a fan of those wind serpents, the ones that Pandaria has, the ones that are, you know, the ones that some of them are mounts. These ones I've never been a fan of, but I think this particular design, this particular model detail of Etherworms is just fantastic, so I definitely recommend that you tame one. This slowly brings us to Maldraxxus. Maldraxxus is the area where you will find the next bunch of pets all over the place, and we will start here with absolutely mind-bogglingly amazing looking Marojo. Marojo is a bird of prey. It is a named, it is a named specific bird, but this model you can see all over Maldraxxus. It doesn't mean that you have to hunt 
and tame specifically Marojo, who is residing you. It will be just on your way as you're questing. I simply am not going to show it here, just not to spoil it for you, not to do a quest spoiler, but it is close to Seat of the Primus. And once you are in Maldraxxus, once you're doing questing, questing through Maldraxxus, there is no chance that you'll miss it. It will be right on your way. You will not even need to get out of your way. It is a bird of prey and they are of cunning nature. And as I just said when I was reviewing the others, I am more into ferocity pets. I am not a big fan of the increased movement speed, uh, but at the same time, I love the look so much that I still have it at least as my secondary pet with all my talents of BM. It's my talents are summoning the second pet next to my side. So I actually love Marrow Jaw simply because it looks absolutely just mind boggling. I just love it personally. I do. Number five it bl is Blood Tusk. Blood Tusks are boars. They are also of cunning nature. Oh my goodness. I actually honestly believe that after reviewing everything, and I'm running a little ahead of myself here, um, after looking at all potential unique pets of Shadowlands now, I actually think that there is a vast majority of cunning pets. Tell me in the comments down below, especially if you and once you have a chance to follow the, you know, the path all the way to 60, to take a look at my, at my early end game guide in case you haven't watched it. I highly, highly recommend that you do. It will help you on your very first steps in the end game. Absolutely do that. But Blood Tusks are another cunning pet. Tanky cunning pet. Reduces incoming damage taken by 50% for 12 seconds, so it's tougher. And it has a dash as well, which is very interesting. It is very unique to boars. I would also say that for some people, for some gourmets of the looks, I'd say Blood Tusk actually looks pretty good too. It looks pretty unique. It looks pretty good. This brings us to Gale Screamers. Gale Screamers are chimeras. They are ferocity pets. They're very much up my alley. Life Leech. Fantastic. And they still look very Maldraxian. They look great. They look bony. They look sinister. They look undeady. I don't know what other derivatives of English words I can come up with here. They are fantastic. I would say that Gale Screamers, the only problem with them is that they are ferocity, but they are not tanky ferocity. They are not like Etherworms, for example. Etherworms are tanky ferocity pet. While this one looks great, and I actually prefer the look of, of Gale Screamers to the looks of Etherworms. But at the same time, I think that they are a bit soft on the tanking side. They require quite a lot of heal. They do. But they look diabolically disturbing. And in a good sense of the word. And also, um, I have to say that if you would like an extra button to press, which I never do, but in this case it's actually quite fun. Gale Screamers or Chimeras in general, they give you that active relatively weak AOE Frost Breath. That actually sprays Frost Breath everywhere, looks great, well, arguably great, and is also because of its density and because how it goes everywhere, especially on big pools, it can be very, very annoying for your dungeon group mates if you, if you are using a Chimera in a dungeon. Nobody likes a Chimera in a dungeon, but you could either annoy people with it or do it just for giggles. Next, speaking about diabolically disturbing and amazing look at the same time, of course, if it's your thing, are Tauroluses. Tauroluses. They are oxen. Well, basically, they are oxen. They are tenacity pets. They're tanks. They massively reduce incoming damage. They look like a proper tank. They feel like a proper tank. And they look, if I mentioned it already, diabolically disturbing. But I can easily imagine how it would be. It would be a thing for a lot of people. Let me know in the comments down below if Tauruluses look like your cup of tea, especially Maldraxi Tauruluses, they are fantastic. The double tail, the bony double tail, is what I think bothers me the most, personally. Now we are off to Ardenwild. In Ardenwild, we will start with something a little bit boring, I would say, but it has to be mentioned because it's a cat. Cats are very popular in World of Warcraft, they're super duper popular and they're ferocity family. In this one, it's an Ardenwild Shadowstalker. Shadowstalkers look like cats, but they do have, like, I, I at least I have a feeling that it looks somewhat unique. It's It looks somewhat Shadowland Z. Let me know in the comments down below if you agree. But to me, again, I'm not an expert on every single cat family of World of Warcraft tameables, but this one did look unique, yet it still stays as a normal cat, it has prowl, it is not 
unique enough to be exciting for me, but it still looks different and that's why it makes our list in this particular case something maybe that you will consider. Then we have, well, all over Shadowlands, I really have to say, we have all sorts of grazers. Grazers are courses. Well, those goatee horses, basically. They are ferocity. Surprising, grazers are ferocity. But this one is very special. This one is very special. And it's not about it being bluey. It's about it being a ferocious unicorn. A lot of people are into unicorns. And this one is a ferocious one. Would you believe that? So it is tanky as well. So a lot of people, I think it has very practical usability. It gives you life leech it, and it is also more tanky. So for a solo casual player, I'd say Grazer is probably just as useful as, let's say, Ether Worm would be. Then we have Gorms. Gorms are Carapids. They are tanks. They are tenacity pets. I would say, look, they are unique. I was excited about taming one and looking at one closely. But to me... Finally enough, it's just how the world of taste works, right? To me, this model looks a bit disturbing slash ugly. I don't know why. Maybe I'm just not into bugs and stuff. And yet I can say that I think that Tauruluses and uh, all the pets of, of, say, Maldraxxus are disturbingly good looking. Like, go figure how our brains work. But in this case, I welcome your opinions and to let me know if you like the look of Carapid. But Carapid is a definitely a proper tank. It charges like crazy, it looks disturbing, it probably would be not pleasant for people to have it chewing on them in PvP. I would personally say, look, tame it if you like big bugs. I will not tame Carapid, I will not do that to myself. You know, I don't have a, I don't have an insectophobia of, of sorts, but I'm just not comfortable with it. Then we have a beautiful, beautiful Galpa. It's an Ardenwild Galpa and it's a Toad. Toad is also a tank, yeah? It's very, very, very cute, in my opinion. Very cute. It's one of the best models that I've seen, to be honest with you, in Shadowlands. Very, very detailed. Look at those flowers on the back. And it is very tanky. It's not just tenacity, but it increases dodge. It does all things that a good tank should do. I love it. I absolutely love it. It's very cute. It catches flies when you are in idle mode. I cannot compliment it enough. Then we're off to the final zone, which is Revendreth. Revendreth meets us with another relatively boring model, but that has to be mentioned because they're all over the place, similar to cats of Ardenwild. We have Revendreth hounds. They are of cunning nature. There is nothing special about them. They are simply cunning hounds, as you would expect a hound to be. Why am I mentioning uh, Revendreth hounds? Because it's exactly the same model as the hounds that Nathanas Blightcaller has. So if you are, I don't know, uh, role-playing, if you are, uh, I suppose, transmogging, or in any other way, if you'd like to have hounds that look like Nathanus Blightcallers, then this is your choice. They are all over the place. In Revendreth, you will not have problems of finding them. And yes, like I already said, this one just simply does the slowdown on enemies, lock jaw on an ankle, presumably bites them, and they move slower. A bit boring for me, like cats. I would not be taming one. Now here is, I'm showcasing another unique new family of, um, of pets, of tameables that are being introduced in Shadowlands, which are called Gargons. They are, I don't know, humanoidish bears, humanized bears. I don't even know what to call them. I tried to tame one. I was told that I do not know how to tame Gargons. Fair enough, I don't. So it tells me that there is obviously some tome, something that will teach us in Shadowlands how to tame this family. And they look great. They look great. They look mm, sinister, weird. They certainly definitely have that gothic look about them. I can only suspect that they are tenacity pet. Then also, look, fairly ordinary. I'm not going to say boring, but fairly ordinary choice is um, Revendreth Dreadbat. Dreadbat are bats. They are ferocity pets. They have life leech, as you would expect, and they dispel negative effects, poisons, magic and stuff on themselves. They are soft, they are not tanky, they are fairly soft, once again, they are cool, they look alright as well, they are very gothic, they probably will talk to a certain type of player, someone who would like to, um, who would like to play with a bat next to them, but at the same time, I don't know, I was playing with a bat for quite some time in the end game of Shadowlands Beta, 
as a Beastmaster Hunter, but I don't actually know if I will be doing this in real game on live servers. I probably, in fact, won't be. Now, finally finishing the main lineup of the 15 magical beasts and the ways to find them in Shadowlands, I'm gonna tell you about the Doomfangs. Doomfangs are hounds, once again, and they are three-headed hounds. That's the only unique thing about them. They look slightly unique. I know that we've seen them in the game somewhere before, especially, I think, in Helia raid in... Uh, was it Legion? I'm pretty sure we had a boss that looked exactly like that. But I am unaware of other places in the open world in the game outside of Shadowlands before Shadowlands launches where you'd be able to tame one. Maybe I'm just missing something, I'm not quite sure. But regardless, you can find them in Revendreth. A slightly disappointing thing here is that once again they're cunning and once again they're just slowing down enemies. Like there is nothing special about them. If they've given them three heads and they've made them look so exotic and stuff, I think they should have given them at least something unique. Something unique. But they didn't. So I will not be taming one, but it is probably a look for someone. It's a little bit out there, I'd say, so I probably won't go for it. So these are the 15 pets that we've um, that I've prepared for you guys, something that potentially for you to pursue, find, maybe see if it fits into your life of a BM hunter. And I have one, one I could have had two, but to be honest with you, I ran out of time, so I'm gonna give you one more, number 16, bonus one, and I'm gonna mention the 17th one that is not here visually dis depicted. So these are the more hounds. The hounds of the moor, whatever you want to call them, they have different names, they are of cunning nature, once again, there is nothing unique about them as far as what they do. Yeah, we spoke enough about hounds. However, the look of them is absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. It is probably the best looking tameable model of a tameable pet, tameable beast in Shadowlands that hunters can get their hands on at the moment from what I've seen. It makes me wonder, why can't we tame undead creatures and aberrations while we can tame something that looks like this? Like, what I mean is, it's nothing like a living beast. Just look at the black smoke for legs, okay? And I won't need to defend this point any longer, I think. Now, finally, while we're looking at the moor and all these kind of environments, what I didn't record explicitly, but you can see them running around in my questing. I had, I think, gameplay of the moor released earlier. You can see them. You will see them yourself straight away as you first get plunged into Shadowlands. You see more rats. More rats. Yeah? They are these tiny things running around. So you can tame one. And I have tamed one before, just not in this particular footage. I didn't save the footage from early beta when I did. So you can tame, um, you can tame those more rats. I, frankly, to you, I do not remember what family they belong to, but they were not. What all I recall is that they also have this slightly unique, weird look, and they are not hounds. They are not something else. They are something else. They are like rodents of sort. Yeah, I'm sure there is some family there. This shows you how often I tame stuff. I never do, almost. Um, and they were not super useful as well. They kind of, in my in my mind back then, they kind of registered as something not particularly useful. That's why I didn't keep one. But just for completeness of the picture, I'm gonna at least mention that you can also try taming more rats. They are also fairly unique. Maybe you'll choose to do so. And this is all I had to you for today, my friends. Did you enjoy it? I hope you did. If you did, please don't forget to like the video. Let me know that you did enjoy it. Let YouTube know that you enjoyed it. And if you're not subscribed but are new to this casual club of solo players, I don't only play Beastmaster Hunters, I play lots of different classes and I talk about them to you guys. Please subscribe, please consider supporting the growth of this channel. Let me know in the comments down below if any of these pets was like, wow, I'm gonna tame that. Let me know because that is exactly, that makes me feel warm and fuzzy inside. Like I actually did something good and I did suggest something that you will definitely pursue and keep your eyes out as you quest through Shadowlands and as you get across that pet, so you are going to tame that. So. Please subscribe, please let me know how you feel about these pets, are there any that you fell in love with, and I will be speaking with you again on some other Shadowlands related topic very soon, videos are being released twice a week at the very least, see you later, talk to you soon guys, bye.